to Rob's Jobs Tiny House Build Videos and in episode 3 we will be working with a bunch of interesting things. Right now I'm continuing with the underground storage boxes and behind the scenes I have cut 3 millimeter plywood to size to fit exactly in the boxes and the insulation is all into place. I have drilled holes and countersunk holes and now I'll be screwing all these pieces in wood to place. When I'm done with this box, I'll probably paint it so it will become very tight and nice. The walls and the floor have been screwed into place and now it's time to do the top layer here. And what I also made is a beautiful saw table, DIY. I just put my circular saw underneath this table and I'm using uh, old wood and just regular clamps to cut this stuff to size. And now it's time to screw everything in place neatly. The interior wooden lining of the underground storage boxes is complete. Everything is screwed into place and nicely sanded a little bit. Now I will probably paint the wood. I still have to think about it a lot. You'll see it in a second. Uh, so I'll paint all of this and then we need to figure out what we're going to put on top and how we're going to mount it. So I'm going to need some hinges. There we go. We got some hinges. These are just steel hinges from the store. And very simple and cheap. I will place these hinges face down on the side of the wood and make sure that they are sunken down in so that the floor lays flush. And I also will have to take a little part of wood out because in the middle of this axle needs to be in the middle of the wood. This way the hatch door will be able to open up this way and lock itself on a specific angle. I don't know what the angle is, but it's fine. So the whole door will be opening up from the center and there will be two doors probably. I'm still thinking to put one big door, but I think two small doors would be perfect. It's time to start painting. I've cleaned the boxes. I've um, added some silicone in the edges. I cleaned up everything, I screwed up everything nicely and it's all ready to go. I got a selection of paint here. Uh, the friend of mine that I'm staying with has got uh, some leftovers and some of them are just half empty. Uh, this one is for the house, so I'm not doing that. I have two whites and one red. What do you think? I think opening up a hatch in the ground and then seeing a bunch of red at you is, uh, is pretty cool. So I'm gonna open this up and um, I'm gonna put this on. It looks amazing. It's like a deep Bordeaux, pinkish, purple, red. I think it'll be amazing. So let's put it on time lapse. The time lapse filled, I'm sorry, but it's painted. At least the first layer is on and it looks pretty sick. It's one day later, the paint has dried. This is the first layer. I will be putting another layer on top today. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, the shitty stuff that I use in the corners uh, is horrible and it didn't dry and the paint didn't stick onto it, so this is terrible. Now, I'll just probably try to clean it out and paint over on top of it. Uh, what I also did is get the planks for the hatch doors. So these will be cut to size and fit exactly in the hole. Okay, the silicone kit has been removed, looks terrible, um, I'll be sanding the paint now with a 240 grit and then doing another layer. And let's see if we need two or three layers in total. I'll use this instead. Everything has been sanded and degreased and now I'm ready for the second layer. This time I'm using one of these instead of a brush, which will make life a lot easier. I ended up putting three coats on there, now it looks really great, and now I can peel the tape off.
because the door will be placed right here and there is no support underneath here I will add a corner bracket to support the weight of well my body stepping on onto here so I'm attaching them with these pretty thick metal screws self-tapping it's a pretty thick screw but it will probably go in there just fine wood screws I'm adding by hand and after this I would have to cut off the end because it's sticking out. Alright I've got the bracket fixed and now this should be nice and stable to stand on with no problems. So that's strong enough to put a door on there. Uh, as you can see I'm also fitting the hatch panels here. The hatches fit perfectly in the length and now I have to cut them on the right size here so that they line up perfectly in the middle. And I draw it out and it's time to sew it in. Perfect, the panels fit perfectly into the hole and now I have this wooden edging for the OSB boards to make it pretty because I will be opening these hatches quite a lot. So I'm gonna stick these to the sides here which will make it nice and pretty. So for the hinges I have to decide where I will place them. I was thinking about putting them on all the corners but I think it's smarter to place them a little bit more inside. Now I'm marking the locations and I will be sinking these into the floor to show that they are flush. I'm not sure how to cut this out though so my first thing was let's do it with the chisel. But then I thought I have something better. Okay, I added some temporary handles made out of a car belt, car seat belt, so I can uh, I can place the panels and make sure to mount the hinges. There you go, they fit into place perfectly, and now I'm going to mount the hinges. As you can see, they lay beautifully flush where they're supposed to be and I think it's gonna work really well I also need to drill into the steel to make sure that the, the screws lay flat and flush Alright guys, these underground storage boxes are done, they are now integrated into the floor, everything is nice and seamless, they open up beautifully, and that will be the end of today's episode, thank you very much for watching episode 3, in the next episode hopefully there will be a steel frame, I'll see how it goes, uh, anyway every day is progression, so I'm happy, thank you.